Hi everyone. I recommend before you move on at this point that you review your SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 mechanisms. And what I'd like to do is ask all the students to create a mechanism portfolio. So for example, let's say we're doing SN1. I want you to think of a molecule that might be good for SN1. So I'm going to pick something that's a tertiary leaving group. So maybe something like this. And then even better would be to make it chiral somehow. Okay, so maybe I do something like this. All right. Uh, so what I want to see is uh, an example. So you can pick or you can even find something out of the book or online. That's totally fine. And I want you to think about, you know, what kind of reagents would be good for this. So I'm going to choose ethanol, which is a weak base. And since this is tertiary, I'm going to just demonstrate what the mechanism is. So uh, one example of this would be uh, something like that. And maybe here I make that look like this certain isomer. And then this is going to lead to what? So this is sort of nice to do with different colors too, so you could really see what's going on. So for this, I'm just going to do that. And remember, this uh, alcohol can attack from the front or from the back. If it attacks from the front, you get... Uh, you get your ethoxide in the front, but it's still got its hydrogen on there. Okay, and so I want to see every single intermediate. So don't show me a bunch of arrows all at once. I want you to isolate. You know, if it's more than one step, I want you to show me these intermediates here. Okay, and show me with the arrows what's happening. And I've got my bromide leaving group down here. And then remember that's not stable, so we keep going and we show what happens here. All right, let's keep it going. Okay, oh, there we go. And I have another ethanol. Squeezing it in here on my page. There we go, okay. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna also get it's an ant tumor because I might have the attack coming from the back. So I could either say plus an antumor or I could actually draw it out, which I prefer for now since you guys are learning all of this. It's good to practice it. All right. Okay, in addition to this, so this is an example for SN1, I really recommend as you're learning this to rationalize all the steps. So, you know, SN1 is faster for tertiary versus secondary. It's basically non-existent for these because the carbocation is too unstable. Nucle the nucleophile, so this is the rate determining step because the dissociation is going to be the highest activation energy. And then this is more reactive, so it's much easier to do once you've got that bromide off. You've got the uh, nucleophilic attack um, on either side. Okay, so just making notes to myself so I know what's going on. Um, and that's going to lead to a racemic mixture. If it's chiral, if it's achiral, then that doesn't apply. Okay, and then what would I say here is proton transfer from here to here, or the base grabs the hydrogen. So this is proton transfer, or it's also just called deprotonation. Going to know it either way. All right, so see, that's my SN1 reaction. So I basically want you to either pick your own starting material or find an example in the book and just follow it through and rationalize it to yourself. Use colors if you can, write notes in for yourself, whatever is helpful, this is for you. And uh, I'm just encouraging you by incentivizing with points, but I do want you to do this and I want you to just, you know, I, I if this is long, you know, you could do one per page or you could just, Put the next one down here, SN2. And then show an example for that. Write in notes, use colors, whatever it takes. So do that for all four reactions, SN2, E1, and E2 as well. So after you do that, then you're going to have an easier time with looking at a mechanism and knowing how things are moving. So for example, um, we left off last time with practicing our E2 reactions regarding antiperiplanar geometry. So what I want to do now is see if you can tell the difference between E1, which is usually with a weak base, going through a carbocation intermediate, versus the E2, which is with a strong base. So let's just practice going back and forth between E1 and E2. So for the first one, uh, I see this is primary. 
So that can happen with um, E2, but not with E1. E1 means that you go through a carbocation, and primary is not a great carbocation. So that would be just too high an energy barrier for that. I also know it's E2 because this is a strong base. So think back to your E2 mechanism. So I'm going to have a beta hydrogen leave at the same time that the double bond is formed. So I only have two beta hydrogens in this case. So I'm going to take my ethoxide, which I actually prefer if you draw it out. N-A-O-E-T. I want to know that you know that it's the ethoxide with a negative charge. So I'm going to grab that, and we're going to go like that. E2 is one step. So all of this is happening at the same time, so having three arrows is fine. But if it was uh, one step and then another and then another, I want to see those intermediates. Okay, In this case, it's fine. Now notice, even though this is a small base, we have a less substituted alkene form, but actually it's the only, sub it's the only alkene that can form. I don't have a choice to put it here. First, because there aren't any beta hydrogens here, but also because the leaving group is way over here, so I can't form a double bond over here. So because of the structure, this is the only alkene I can get. So there is no Zaitz of Hoffman, because this is the only possible product I can get. Now let's look at part B. See if you guys can tell what kind of reaction this might be, E1 or E2. And then also try to come up with a mechanism for this. And I'll give you a hint. I would think of H2SO4, that sulfuric acid. Um, sulfuric acid, if you draw it out, it looks like this. Uh, so it's sort of a lot to look at. So this is the, this, these are the acidic hydrogens. So what I like to do is I just like to nickname H2SO4 as H+. Just think of this whole thing as H+. All right, so uh, see if you can figure out what's going on here. And the idea is you want to make this a better leaving group and then see what happens from there. Go ahead and give it a try. All right, guys, so the first step is just to protonate there. And what we have is a secondary uh, molecule, protonated alcohol. And notice that this water can leave now. So there is no strong base in solution to pull off a beta hydrogen, so that's not going to be able to get started there. We're going to have to alternatively let go of this water, which forms my carbocation here. And now, whenever you make carbocations, you always want to look for rearrangement possibilities. And I see here, with all these methyl groups, I can move one over and do a methyl shift. So that puts my positive charge here, and I'm still in a carbocation intermediate, so a second one. And now from here, I can explain why the carbon skeleton changes to this kind of a shape, right? Because we didn't start with that before. We started with a tert-butyl kind of a pattern, and now we have like an isopropyl kind of pattern. So now I know where that carbon skeleton came from. So from here, I want to explain the major product. This is elimination here. So that's going to be my Zaitsev product versus here, this is my Hoffman product. So for the Zaitsev product, I want to figure out what beta hydrogen to take. So I have these beta hydrogens here and this one right here. And if I want the double bond, i got to take this one. Now for base, it's hard to know what to use because we're actually in an acidic solution. So I can't just throw in hydroxide or any kind of base. I have to use what's in solution. So we know this is a strong acid, so the conjugate is actually a really weak base. So I wouldn't even use HSO4 minus. I would probably just use another alcohol. So let's say that my starting alcohol, I'll just abbreviate it ROH. It comes in and it helps to neutralize this and do the elimination to the Zaitsev product. Now from here, I'm just going to draw on the same one just to save space. I'm going to say to go from here to here, then instead of this hydrogen, it must have taken one of these. So I'll just show that, and I'll show an alcohol over here, and that leads to my Hoffman product. And then notice I have 3% of this, and where does that come from? That's coming from before rearrangement. Uh, maybe I had a base come and grab this H instead. So that leads to before rearrangement. Okay, so these are just an example, and I think since now you've seen an E2 example and an E1 example, 
I think you want to now think about reviewing SN2 on your own and SN1. So maybe do something similar. And then we're going to practice mixing all four.